Hi, it's July 26, 2012. This is the Scoperta project. Dan Damron has uh, been working on the software lately and he's got some changes that he would like to describe and demonstrate. Uh, hello. Um, one of the major things that we noticed from our uh, uh, review on how the mutant shares worked was that uh, there was definite turning issues both on, the, on the, all, all the furniture. And one of the things that I didn't like was that you couldn't just turn on a dime. Uh, the reason for that is the software was actually designed so that both motors could operate either forward or backward, but not both. So I trained, went and that's the first change in the software that I did is modified that and cleaned that all out so that either motor can operate independently, uh, one forward, one backwards. And now you can see that the... the uh, unit actually turns a lot easier and uh, so that was the first major change and that took basically a almost well pretty much a complete rewrite because all the code was based on that all motors forward all motors back um, then I decided to, to change uh, the throttle basic the throttle uh, forward and back value on my weak nunchuck versus my absolute maximum value on the weak nunchuck. I mapped it to minus 255 to positive 255. That way, whatever value, um, whatever value was there was basically going to be my full throttle and I applied that to both motors. Uh, I did add a dead, dead band in there as well, so there's a dead band, we'll talk about that later. Uh, almost identical to that, I did the same thing with the x-axis, or the left and right turning. Uh, however, the left and right turning is a little bit different in the way I add it to it. First of all, it's not a full, uh, it's mapped slightly smaller, so it's uh, plus or minus about 50. And then uh, what I did is, in order to turn left, you're actually seeing about a minus 50 at the, at the full X, your full uh, negative x variable. So what I do is I take that and add that to the left motor, which means uh, left motor is whatever the throttle value is, minus 50, or plus negative 50. Uh, then I also subtract it from the right motor, meaning the right motor is whatever the throttle is, minus minus 50, or positive 50. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that uh, seems to work fairly well at slow speeds. At higher speeds, it doesn't so much work so as well because all of a sudden uh, you're going and then you go to turn and all of a sudden you got this 50 turn and it throws the motor into reverse. And then you just lay a great big trail of uh, rubber. And that's not so good. So anything faster than about 150, I have now also implemented what's called, I call it pulse reverse brake. And all it is is taking whatever value uh, of forward throttle that I'm using, divided by 10, and then apply that as a back throttle on that motor for 10, 10 milliseconds. Uh, and continue with my thought. We'll edit it after. Repeat the last thing as soon as the jet goes over. <laughs> okay. So at high speed, High turning rates. Uh, I've taken a little bit different approach. One of the other things we noticed on the weekend was that uh, we needed to be able to break the wheel because I, if we had too much inertia going on both wheels. So I've now added a pulse back routine or, or four separate pulse brake routines. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically, what they do is uh, they take the forward throttle position, multiply it by 0.1 or divide by 10 and then uh, apply that as a pulse backwards, that's your PWM value, and that, that's applied backwards for 10 milliseconds. That's negative power applied to negative the motor. Negative power applied to the motor, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which basically makes the motor um, shimmy, per se, or shake a little bit, but what it in fact does is add a little bit of braking to the motor. Mm -hmm. In the stepper world, it's called chatter. Chatter, exactly. Can we see this? Uh, it's gotta be applied in a fairly good speed. Perhaps while you're riding it, uh, 
Yeah, it'll probably have to happen in, when I do the riding. Okay. So, uh, other than that, um, I've also, because I've basically done a full rewrite, there's a lot of routines that are not in here yet that I'd like to add in uh, sooner than later. Number one, a safety routine. Uh, slow speed up, slow speed down type thing. Right. That's not in here. Okay. Um, there's a dead man switch one as dead well. Dead man switch is in here, but it does not check for uh, a full throttle dead man launch. Right. So this is just the same safety procedures, but re-added to the code. Yeah, it just needs to be re-added, so. Okay. Um, yeah, so with that, uh, first demonstration is, uh, I've also taken off the brake. This, the parking brake is, is deactivated temporarily. All right. So the first one I'm gonna do is uh, this left turn, and it's basically turning on itself. And then I'll do the same thing right turn. It needs a little bit of a bump there to get the caster set properly. Compared to the past version of the code where it was difficult to get the casters to realign? Exactly. Looks so you way better. Go a little bit forward and a little bit left or whatever just to get it to, uh, to operate. But I mean we're also on grass on a slight slant and it's turning with no issues whatsoever. What would you like to show us next? Um, I'm going to go straight up. There you can hear that uh, the other thing that's interesting too is that what's kind of um, human intuitive is that if you are going forward and you're trying to turn left and you don't actually, you're not turning left fast enough, you tend to put it all the way left. In my code, that turns around and does something else. That turns around and says, okay, I want it do the opposite wheel thing and so it actually kind of assists it a little bit but uh, that's about it awesome so it works a lot better now it can go uphill and turn as it's going uphill so yeah well i think i like your code a lot more than i like my code <laughs> well it runs a lot nicer than it used to so one of our problems dan was trying to explain was that the, the forward inertia really messed us up because when you drove forward and then tried to turn left my code would drop the power out of the motor that you wanted to turn and would result in nothing because the inertia would just keep carrying you forward because it wasn't really reducing. So right. Dan's reverse reverse pulsing has, has allowed it to, to kind of break instead of just slowing down. And I think that's fantastic. So we have the beginnings, we have a very good beginning of active braking now incorporated yep. with the existing version 1.4 H bridges yep. on the existing moving furniture platforms. And by the way, I've been monitoring the, the temperature of the H bridges with the uh, potential uh, overheating issue of reverse braking and they're not even coming close to warming up so we're talking ambient temperature yeah awesome well this is the scoperta project reporting on october uh, sorry july 26 2012 thanks very much gentlemen